And we are back with another Black With No Cream podcast. New episode every single Wednesday and Sunday. It's motherfucking Wednesday. And we are back with another deep dive episode. I actually think that we found a name for these Wednesday segments. All right, drum roll, please. I'm going to call them the morning roast. Yep, the morning roast. They're here every Wednesday. They're going to provide you with some wisdom on specific questions and topics that uh, we see talked about often within our Black Window Cream private community. I, I want to give you as much advice as I can from my experiences in the industry so far. I figured most of this shit out the hard way. I'm just trying to make it so you don't have to. Morning Roast. Goddamn. I love that name. The Morning Roast. That's fucking dope. All right, we are a private group on Facebook, open to creators of all kinds, aka if you make videos, if you're a photographer, if you do marketing, management, editing, dancing, etc., 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 all creators are welcome. Our private group has been growing rapidly. We have a shit ton of members working together by sharing content, asking for feedback, they're passing tips and tricks along to one another with the goal of pushing each other to become the best motherfucking content creators on earth. And you can join our group if you want to by going to bwnc.com slash join. We would love to fucking have you. Please join that shit. After you listen to today's morning roast episode, please head over to the Black Window Cream YouTube channel and leave us a comment with a topic that you would like us to grind on for next week. That would be fucking awesome. I will also be highlighting a Black Window Cream member at the end of today's episode, so stay tuned to see if that is you. And if you want to be highlighted next week, be sure to continue sharing your insane work within our community. I'm going to just highlight members that are in the private community, sharing their work and working together to help each other, like become the illest people possible. So yeah, I love seeing you guys and shit. Keep fucking up the game. If you are new to the podcast, make sure to subscribe to us on every platform possible. Turn on your motherfucking notifications. We are on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Stitcher, literally every platform that exists for podcasts. Um, you can find links on bwnc.com slash podcast and all the other information about our podcast is there. So do that. Uh, all right, that's it. Enjoy the work week. Keep creating. And without further ado, I bring to you today's morning roast and the most epic podcast intro ever created right motherfucking now. Attention. If you stop this podcast recording at any time, you will die. I don't want to die. Do you want to live? Yeah. You have 24 hours to share this podcast with five people or you will die. I'm kidding. You won't die. You're just weak shit for not sharing. And the winner of the best motherfucking podcast goes to... Goes to... Black with no cream. What do you think? It's so fucking dumb and so fucking Ben Haggerty. I knew you would say that. With the rise of social networks as legitimate business platforms, I think it's become more and more common for aspiring creators to value DMs over email when reaching out to potential collaborators or clients. Now, this may sound obvious, but I really believe that since it's so easy nowadays to have a direct line of contact to anyone via DM, and especially because young creators are coming up on their own by utilizing social media, that there is a lack of development and refinement when it comes to the way people reach out for work. As a result, I think there are a lot of young creators out there coming up without one, an environment that forces you to hone your skills in becoming an effective emailer, and two, a real understanding of just how important emails are in the actual industry and how they can benefit your success. When it comes down to it, your ability to draft up an email that is clear, concise, and most importantly effective will determine whether or not you will land an opportunity or get a response from that connection you are seeking. And even if direct messages are a better method of contact or the path of least resistance for some situations, which is definitely possible, you will still benefit from utilizing a more thought out, refined approach as you would in an email. So without farther ado, here are three tips to implement into your next email that will, without a doubt, 100% increase your chances of getting a positive reply or even a reply at all. Tip number one, write as if you are being graded on it. Once you send an email, you have shot your shot. You cannot get it back, so don't be quick to send it. You should really think critically about how you write your email when you're reaching out for a job or to connect with someone that can benefit your career or goals. I say this all the time. You have to think of it like your elevator pitch. You get one shot to either convince this person or impress them enough to not only answer you, but to take the action that you want them to take. So don't rush it. Instead, when you're writing an email, review and edit it as if you are being graded by a teacher on three things. Professionalism, clarity, and concision, aka how brief you can get while still being comprehensive. So the first criteria, professionalism. We have spoken on this podcast before about how important it is to write professionally 
when reaching out or communicating with clients. But this cannot be stressed enough. Your writing serves as a first impression on your behalf of how capable you are, how qualified you are, and how intelligent you are, among many other things. Any grammar errors, misspelled words, or poorly structured sentences all will have an adverse impact on how someone feels about you after they read your email. On top of that, all of those things affect how well the other person is able to understand what you are trying to say. You don't want either of those things to happen. So like I said earlier, don't rush. Double and triple check your draft to make sure that you haven't misspelled any words or missed any punctuations. Then make sure you are utilizing the most effective word choice to get your message across. Using stronger diction helps you deliver your message with more meaning. You don't want to speak conversationally in an email if you don't already have a relationship with the person you are speaking to. Confirm that all of your sentences are structured correctly and fluidly. This has a big effect on how effortless it is for someone to read your email. You don't want a bunch of run-on sentences that are hard to follow, but you also don't want a bunch of choppy, lifeless sentences. It's a balance. Finally, remember that your choice of punctuation sets the tone for your email. When I was in high school, my siblings and I would often send our class papers to our Uncle Dan to look over and give his criticism before handing it in to the teacher. It was beneficial for me to get my markups first instead with him versus my teacher because the teacher would ultimately be giving me a permanent score on my paper, which would result in a permanent grade for that semester, while my Uncle Dan was just giving me criticism as a friend and to help us grow and learn. The point is, taking your time and searching to be as professional as possible will always result in a win. Find someone like an Uncle Dan that you can send your email to just to make sure that everything that you wrote is on point. This will always help point out mistakes that are easily overlooked, especially when you are in the zone for so long drafting up your message. Shout out to Crazy Uncle Dan. The second criteria is clarity. Take special note of this shit right here. You will not be right next to the person you are emailing to explain what you meant in that email. Yep. How crazy is that? So the only way to make sure that everything you say comes across correctly is to be crystal fucking clear. It is so important that the person reading your email will have absolutely no trouble understanding who you are, what you do, what you want, and or how you can help them. At a glance, they should be able to visually distinguish the important information from the less important information. This begins at the very top of the subject line and goes all the way through your sign off. For the subject line. This is your hook. It determines whether the person you are emailing decides it is necessary to click your email now or blow it off completely. When you have a vague and unspecific title, someone is much less likely to open your email and even if they do, they are already going into it without being exactly sure what you are emailing them for, which is starting off on the wrong foot. Here's a quick example. Say you are emailing an artist manager about shooting photo or video for one of their shows. You can make the subject line of your email, photo, video, or LA photographer, which would just slot you immediately in the manager's mind as the everyday email he or she probably gets from hundreds of different people weekly. Or you could title it, inquiry, photo, video, at the Palladium, Los Angeles, 1116. And now, not only have you created some urgency, but you have directly specified off top which city, venue, and exactly what show date you're inquiring about so the manager doesn't have to decipher the first paragraph of your email trying to figure out what you're proposing. For the body of your email, like I said earlier, be forward about exactly who you are, what you do, and what you can provide from the jump of your email. Be clear on this front from the start, then back it up. Also, spacing is everything. You don't want your message to be one long continuous paragraph. Not only is this daunting to look at at first glance, but it makes it hard for someone to distinguish different parts of your email and quickly find information that they are looking for, which means you are not clear. So space out your email by the sections, i.e. your intro, your experience, your links, your closing, or whatever it is, so that your email is easy to look at and navigate. And just like the title, make sure you are specific Communicate exact dates, locations, exact numbers, contact info, etc. You can utilize bolding, underlining, or bullet points whenever necessary to emphasize things that need to be paid attention to or may not need to be recalled until a later time. And for your sign-off, it's simple. Your full name, your job title, your contact info, and your website. I would even include one line that says Instagram slash Twitter or your top two social platforms and hyperlink each one of those to your profiles. That way, if someone needs to quickly get a hold of you or view something, they can scroll to the bottom and get exactly what they need quickly. The last and most important criteria is concision, aka be concise. 
As we all know, you have someone's attention span for such a small amount of time. The person that you are emailing likely has plenty of things to do, and the more time that they have to spend reading your email, the less likely they will be wanting to reply afterwards. So, be concise. Be concise. Be motherfucking concise. You will be so much more successful in your email if you do this. Make sure that every sentence has a purpose. Eliminate all unnecessary explanations and elaboration that doesn't directly make you more clear in what you are trying to convey. Stick exactly to what the person needs to know in order for the goal of your email to be completed. In summary, go back and trim the fat before hitting send. Remember, most of these people are reading these emails via mobile, so a few paragraphs can seem like an entire fucking book. Trim the fat. And remember, professional, clear, and concise equals effective. Tip number two, simplify the process. This is super crucial. Oftentimes when you are reaching out to someone via email, you are wanting the person on the other end to do something that is beneficial to you. For example, you want them to view your work or offer you a job or accept your proposal or connect you with someone else. Whenever you want people to do something that is not directly in their best interest, you have to make your request as easy as possible for them or else it's likely they won't help. Two ways to simplify the process are one, eliminate clicks and two, eliminate the follow-up email. What do I mean by eliminate clicks? Thanks for asking, motherfucker. Let me explain with an example. Let's say you're reaching out to land a job as a videographer, a photographer, designer, whatever it may be, and you want to direct the potential client to go see or watch some of your work. You want them to be able to click one time and be looking at your best work that is relevant to them. If you're a videographer reaching out to an artist team to shoot a music video, send them a direct link to your best music video that you've done that would appeal to them. Don't just send them a YouTube channel link or your IG handle and make them have to search for those pages to find what you want them to see. Definitely don't just send them your handle. If you are a photographer seeking to shoot a model, send a direct link to a page that has your best portraits and studio photos. Don't send your portfolio website link and have them have to click enter on your landing page and then find the section on your photography portfolio that's relevant to them. All these things are more clicks, aka more effort that that person has to put in to see what you want them to see. In that time alone, they could have already lost interest or found something that turned them away. This just happened to me personally when traveling to New York City earlier this week to direct a video for EA Games. I made a post in the Black Window Cream community asking if anyone was interested in shooting behind the scenes. Many people responded interested, but didn't have a link to their work at all. Other people responded interested, leaving me links to their website. And when I would visit their site, it was completely difficult to scroll around and find examples of their work. So I would exit and move on. Some people even gave me links to sites that hadn't been updated at all. So some of the links were expired. What the fuck? That person could have been the most talented creator of all the submissions, but they made that shit too hard to find. And my time was very limited on that trip as it was already. So I couldn't spend time digging through websites as I need to be more focused on creative. Simplicity is always key. Once they're able to see your best work with little to no effort, then they will probably be willing to check out more of your stuff because you have piqued their interest. If they are on your website, they will click around and see other stuff or watch your other videos to see more. Don't make them navigate the first time. You can always send a couple direct links to images, videos, and pieces of work and then say, if you would like to see more of my work, you can check out my entire portfolio at bwnc.com or whatever at the end of the email. That way you are clear. So the first way to simplify the process is to eliminate clicks. The second way to simplify the process is to eliminate the follow-up email. What I mean by this is just thinking a step ahead in the process of what you want to accomplish. You want to minimize the amount of back and forth emailing so you can secure the bag as quickly as possible. Every time that something requires a follow-up, you are increasing the chances something doesn't get done or your email gets lost in the shuffle. So how can you prevent this? Think about what the other person on the other end of the email might respond back and include anything ahead of time that could make it easier for them. Like we said earlier with clarity, provide all necessary information up front, contact info, dates, locations, services, examples of work, anything that eliminates the need for farther clarification or gathering of information. The more you can minimize that, the more you can narrow the conversation to what you want it to be about, the job, the proposal, or the request. A quick analogy that I came up with has to do with customer service. Let's say you ordered something online and it showed up to your house in the mail and it was broken or something. Now you got to email the customer service and ask for a refund or for them to send a replacement. Say it's a hard drive. When you email customer service or leave them a message, it would be easy for you to just write, I ordered this hard drive last week and it got to my house and it's broken. 
But then the reply email is going to be them asking you for all the specifics, the order number, your first and last name, date and delivery, model of the hard drive, whatever it may be. And now you've got to reply to that email and wait for them to respond again before the process can advance, which is just going to lengthen the amount of time until you can get what you want, which is your refund or shipment of a new hard drive. Instead, you could have been like, Hi, my name is Ben Haggerty, a.k.a. Ben Rovers World, host of the Black Window Cream Podcast, the most lit podcast on earth. And uh, I'm contacting you about my order of the Lacey 4 terabyte hard drive order number fucking 3004 or some shit that I ordered on November 13th when this item was delivered on November 14th. The box was smashed. I would like to request a refund or replacement sent. My contact number is blah, blah, blah. My email is fuckyourbrokenharddrive at gmail.com. And if you need any farther information, please let me know. Now, the customer service agent has everything up front he or she may need to complete your request, and all that they need to do now is just respond with the final answer. You also just made that person's life a lot easier, which means that they are likely going to make it a lot easier for you. Use this in your emails. The final tip, number three, is less I and more you. So when I started talking about the last tip, I said oftentimes when you're reaching out to someone via email, you are wanting the person on the other end to do something that will benefit you. So you have to make it as easy for them, right? Well, more important than that, and the most important tip of the podcast, if you leave this podcast learning one thing at all, let it be this. The way you get people to do things for you is to provide value to them. So your email should be 100% focused on communicating how you can benefit the person you are emailing. So many creators are reaching out for an opportunity and only talking about why the opportunity would be great for them. I see it all the time in my DMs and I don't blame them. It's easy to write a message about why you personally want a gig and why it would be a great experience and opportunity for you. I've done it a million times myself. But what I've learned is no one gives a fuck You have to think the opposite way. Why is this a great opportunity for the client to work with you? What can you provide for them? How can you make their job easier or better or even more productive? These are the things that you need to be focused on conveying when you are writing your email because these are the things that they care about. When there are a ton of other people out there chasing the same opportunities as you, why should someone pick you over a bunch of other people emailing the same thing? So many creators want the same job that you do. So why should they choose you? Think critically about how you are conveying your message via email. Are you clearly providing value to the other person or are you just speaking about how it's going to provide value for you? If it's the latter, then revise your email. Think about what the person you are contacting needs and then make sure you articulate how you can benefit them. If you are shooting a show, how could the manager or the artist benefit from this? They get a recap video or a photo gallery to promote their show promote future shows on social media. They could use the raw video clips to promote the live atmosphere of the show. They could get lifestyle content to post in between shows. They could use shit on their social channel. They could use things for press releases and new single album artworks. The list goes on. Any of those things articulated will strike better than you just reaching out and saying that you want to shoot because you want to shoot and because you have experience or because you are a fan. Remember, you are reaching out because you can benefit the other person and in turn, you will benefit from the work. Less about you, more about them. So in conclusion, please take your time. Slow your fucking roll, focus on the goal, and execute at a high level. Don't rush. The person on the receiving end isn't dying over there to fucking get your email. They get them every day. They just want you to take your time, make it as easy as possible to understand your goal and wishes. That's it. Just be a good person. You will start to get some responses. Don't ever copy and paste an email. That shit is trash. Customize those bitches to every person that you reach out to. And yeah, I hope this helps. Bye, bye, bye. That's it for episode 41. If you found this episode helpful, please let us know in the comments. If you have a topic that you would like me to talk about on next week's Morning Roast, um, just leave a comment on the Black Window Cream YouTube channel. Join our creative community by going to bwnc.com slash join. Subscribe to Black Window Cream Podcast on every channel. And make sure to tune in to this Sunday's episode. This one's a banger. We're featuring rapper, singer, songwriter, Thutmose, It's an incredible story. You're going to want to tune in to hear this dude's story about 
coming from Nigeria all the way to Brooklyn and, and becoming an actual rising star right now in the music industry. He's killing it. Before I get out of here, I want to highlight a Black Widow Cream member. You guys are all so incredible and are working your ass off day in and day out when it comes to creating. I appreciate you always showcasing your work and allowing everyone to see your process so that they can learn as we all grow together. Um, today, I'm going to be highlighting Jamal Jackson. He has been sharing a lot of value, asking fucking great fire questions, to be honest, and has just overall, he's been like, I don't know, I guess provoking real life interaction. I see him commenting all the time and asking, you know, for people to link and, and sharing job opportunities and things like that with other Black Window Cream members. I just, I love that shit. So make sure to search for Jamal Jackson in the Black Window Cream Facebook group and give him a follow. Um, if you want to be featured in next week's member highlight or whatever the fuck I call this shit, just be active in the community. Make sure to share quality posts with the members. And my goal is to just always encourage posts that provide education and tips to others. I think that helps us all. So, all right, that's it uh, for today. That's it for today. I'll see you this Sunday, you bitch. bitch, bitch.